Mike, 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 check one, two, one, two. Hello. I'm Sean Pekas Costner. I'm Kenny JD. Welcome to Connected Dots. We're in the building. It's super exciting because today we have two legends in the making. Well, I like that, Kenny. <laughs> two future legends. And, We're going to figure and, and, out if they're legendary status by the time we finish this show. <laughs> You hear this shit? I mean, like, there's a lot of disrespect <laughs> going on here. Crazy. I'm not yeah. sure about Forget the cows being disrespectful. <laughs> we got. Right, what's going on here? What With the, the non matching pillows. <laughs> I mean, right. We got BMX extraordinaire, Nigel Sylvester here, as well as mm -hmm. Diamond extraordinaire, jewelry maker of the stars. I know that's right. right. <laughs> Talk Talk. We're going to get the uncut version Talk from that. the Talk. star. From the uncut uncut jokes. Jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, you and I. And today, we're going to uh, have a chill time. See what you both are made of. See if you are ready to be legends in the making by the end of this. And also just get to know like your paths to how you got here today. And have a lot of fun. One guy. Raps about Jay-Z. The other guy, Jay-Z rapped about. Hey. hey. Let's go. Two there you go. In the wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of... That was kind of early. It was, was like, this is all off the top, too. Like, you guys are really good at this. Yeah, I love you know the beauty mean? of just the silent, like, wow. That just, is deep. Yeah. Just in awe. <laughs> Crazy. I know we were, we were talking um, the other day when we were out in San Diego for the Eastside Golf Invitational. All right. And... Uh, one of the things that I guess uh, you and uh, my friend Billy were talking about, and I remembered as a kid, which was crazy, was when we were younger, those BMX bikes weren't cheap, man. Like, uh -oh. how was it to have, like, you know, like, I'm, I'm sure your mom, your family, your parents, it was probably hard to be able to afford those bikes at that time, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. to, but to be able to see where you went with it, like, right. was it something you just got one Christmas, or did you have to work hard for it? What was it? How, how did it come about for you to garner your interest in that way? I mean, it's a process, right? It was having odd jobs, shoveling mm -hmm. snow, raking leaves on the, on the, like, like the fall time, um, whatever I could around my neighborhood to, like, to get money. Mm -hmm. And then um, my first job actually was with McDonald's. Mm. So I was, oh. I worked almost every position. That's where you built the McDonald's. tenacity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Toys, Toys R Us, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. You know what I mean? Started off like cleaning and then went to the fries and then on the sandwich, um, table and then cashier drive through all the different, different positions but it was saving bread up you know what i mean yeah. and like that's what really was able to kill i could buy a wheel this week or i can buy handlebars in two weeks and mm. it was really like piecing it together it makes getting, it exciting like, hand, getting like hand-me-down parts and things of that nature that's what it was to like build like build my bike because they are expensive you right. know what i mean question why bmx versus say any other like street sport like what about it appealed to you i think i don't know, i think I, at this point in time, I feel BMX chose me. Mm. Mm. You know, like I played basketball and, and played football and whatnot and things of that nature, tried a bunch of different sports, but it was something about the bicycle that I gravitated towards mm. and I fell in love with it. That's and so you, and then you can't then you can't shy away from that calling. Mm. Cause Similar for you, no? My mom made me go to <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it's crazy. So <laughs> he said, what he said, mom, what? My mom made my me. My mom made me. <laughs> That's no lie. No, I was going to ask you that. He said about 2009, right? Is that when you figured I, you was going to be... So your family's in the jewelry business. So is that, is I had correct? some distant relatives in the, in the jewelry business. Oh, okay. hmm. And um, I did a little bit of real estate stuff. I was a loan processor hmm. from 2006 and on. And it was just... It's an office job. I was going to say, that's A person with boring. ADHD, I was sitting there literally <laughs> watching the clock. That was losing my mind. Right. Yeah. Literally, I lost my hair. Like, <laughs> I would watch my hair fall on the paper. It was just, it was horrible. <laughs> but um, my mom one day was like, why don't you go work for some, you know, my cousin or whatever mm. and see how you like it. I was like, all right, I'll go, whatever. I argued with her for a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> it ended up happening. But um, I think... Once I got there, I, I started to realize that I was very good with people. Mm. And, you know, a lot of people started gravitating towards me. I spoke the language in mm. that space. You know how the Diamond District is, Peck. It's just, it's a bunch of buffoonery over there. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, uh, what, what I think, though, I think sometimes you, you, you sort of, like, look at jewelry, right, and, and hip-hop and sports, right? It's always sort of a thing that they all sort of intertwine with one another when it mm. comes to just like culture or art or things of that sort, right? So for you to make your adjustment, because I, I know when we first met, I met you through my man Big Ed, 
and your original name was Mr. Flawless, mm -hmm. which I thought was dope. Like, come on, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you got to know Diamonds and right. Flawless yeah, and this flawless. and that, which I thought was crazy. But you talk about the buffoonery and crazy stuff. What was what was probably the hardest thing for you having to sort of like rebrand yourself and change that name? And, and what was the process and, and why? What did you go through that you had to change your I'm, name? I'm really not allowed to talk about that part. Okay. Due to, you know, I have, you know. So it makes it good. You can't talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> All right. Went through a lot of But talk about the part shit, you can't but, talk about. Um, rebranding was, I mean, it was a very, very tough time in my life. And it, Nigel seen me go through it. It was, yeah. it was, I, I lost it all. You know, I went yeah. from having a big name to basically not having it and, and, and not feeling like I could do it. You know, you kind of lose, mm. you know, it's just, it, it, I just wasn't in a good mental space. People weren't talking about mental health back then. It wasn't, mm. it wasn't a thing. Right. And all this mental health is like, to me, I think is all new. Yeah. It's all fresh stuff that we're starting to, you know, starting uh, to surface I, and we're talking about I, it. It's crazy you said that. I don't think it's new. I think people aren't intimidated about talking about it anymore. Mm. There I it think is. People in our culture, when I say, I don't just mean black or brown, I mean yeah. our culture, right. city kids, urban. Like, because yeah. when we grew up in New York City, we grew up, about, especially Queens, mm -hmm. in the Bronx, same way, Kenny. It's all black, Puerto Rican, mm -hmm. you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Jamaican, mm -hmm. Nigerian, and especially fucking men. Dominican, yeah. Yeah. you know, Honduran. We all like come from a melting pot. So w us coming from the city and, and the five boroughs, just us, from what I know, is, I'm saying personally, us. Um, not that other people don't go through it, but it, probably, it wasn't cool to talk about saying, yo, I feel like I have mental issues, right? It wasn't, right. You were made fun of if you were in a special ed class. You or, were seen as you weak. Know, you, had, you were in yeah. the big weak, yellow right. bus. They, they, what were you saying? Uh, they would be seen as weak, especially yeah, weak, men. Right. Yeah, just, especially yes, men. exactly. And especially in our neighborhoods, right, you can't be perceived as weak or yeah. as less than. Like, no, you can't. You, you do you, everything you, to you not, fucking pick You can't even now. cry. Yeah. Like, right. men, that's what's fucked up about men, and it's like, we're taught from a young age not to cry. Yeah. Right. yeah. And that's why I feel like, and, and you know, all the women are just so much stronger than men emotionally, <laughs> mentally, is because, you, you know, they release and, and mm. yeah. you right. know, there's a, there's a lot there. And we're, we're so bottled up. Right. There's, a, yeah. there's a processing, I think, that women have been giving, maybe uh, inadvertently, but just given women the ability to process emotions and men have always thought that they're not allowed to have them in a lot of ways. So I could definitely see. Yeah, because like we're taught not to. And right. It passes down generation to generation. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like I feel it's super important to break those generational curses, whether it's financially, emotionally, like information wise, like that's something that's super important that I speak to my family about a lot nowadays. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm able to identify the things that some of the things at least that has been passed down. And Isn't that like, crazy looking back at your family and being like, oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> like, 100%, I see why. But it's, I it's, see why you like this. You know, what, but it's, it's, it's so important to communicate. Mm. Like, communication is super important. I think it helps break down those things. Mm. You know what I mean? It's Absolutely. crazy. It's like, I want you to get into it more. Like, tell me, like, what, where, at what point in your life did you feel like, man, I, I'm not afraid to talk about this mental illness anymore? I, I what are some things I, I can do to overcome it? I didn't understand at the time what it was, you know. It mm. just it ended up bleeding into all aspects of my life, you know, mm. my relationships, my you know friendships, my, you know, you you keep things bottled up and then it just you know, it it has to go somewhere. It, it goes somewhere and it's misdirected most of the time. But it it was a it was a very tough time for me, but just moving on helped me. Just it, it just ended up just happening for me. I just mm. just stayed at it, and you know, I got into a space where I was a little healthier mm. mentally, <laughs> but I had to prove myself, you know, make that happen. But ready to make that resurgence again? Yeah, but like if you you do it once, you do it twice. I could I could do it all day. I feel mm. like you know what I mean. Well, I, I know that. I'm, I'm, first of all, thank you, happy, and very lucky to have been around you for past couple of years, and and I've seen that adjustment. You know, mm -hmm. outside of this, we all friends, and we do spend time with each other together now i'm really proud of the place that you've gone because i've seen that in myself sometimes when my mother died it, i was in a very dark place doing mm -hmm. crazy shit you know what i'm saying and then you know you would feel like it'd fuck up your business right mm -hmm. we talked mm -hmm. about that a couple of times I, I see you getting your ass whooped you know your hand slapped mm -hmm. i was there in the rooms a couple of times but what i think is is all about how you handle adversity right you right. can mm -hmm. easily rebel against it or like fuck you who are you to tell me what to do or you can take the criticism well you know. and do what you've done mm -hmm. work on you know you got a store 
uh, across the street from our guy downtown. I'm yeah. seeing I'm excited about that. Can't wait. Shout out to <laughs> shout out to Teddy opening. and May, right? Mm-hmm. right? Got the Greg Una store opening up. And um and and I love that, man. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Brother. Thank proud. you. Likewise, for real. You came a long way, bro. Thank mm-hmm. you. Also, thank you for being so vulnerable about that. Idea. I feel like you have to be, and, and yeah. the reason why I'm, I'm I feel like it's it's okay is because there's if if I would have heard somebody, I think that's how it happened. I heard mm-hmm. somebody be vulnerable, and I'm like, you know what? It's okay to talk about your issues because there might be somebody that's listening to this. And like, you know what? I'm going through the same. Yeah, shit. I thought I was just gonna listen yeah. to BMX and diamonds. Yeah, and yeah. I am someone telling me I to mean, go to therapy. I, said, I appreciate BMX and it. diamonds. Right. We'll turn BMX and diamonds. Oh, like hey, that. why don't we make oh, this on oh, the podcast? Right. That, 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 <laughs> I, I, I expect to be written <laughs> somewhere. Of there, you know somewhere on the on the conception. I'll take a profit. BMX and diamonds. I love that. So quick thing. So now you guys come together. Yuna's got the jewelry. He's giving us the mental health story. So when this plays, all the girls in the room will fucking start crying for him very easily. We know. <laughs> that's oh my, my God, friend so right there. <laughs> I love a man that's in touch with his emotions. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This one is gonna We're repost a couple of times oh on his gram. He don't got to rap no more. He's like, oh, I don't got to rap no more. <laughs> Uh, how do you uh, so so the friendship right and culture right. like so how do you guys take this right you take your love of working with the family business jewelry you take your love of riding a BMX bike um, just your passion now you you you're getting pedals handlebars and all this stuff right. how do you make this transition in your minds to now figure out man I could turn this into a big business for myself uh, how can I create what I've created show people about this authenticity about me and not only that but doing it together you know and individually and together as monks friends mm. you know what i mean like how do you do that i want kids to know how you can make money with your friends off of two different passion passionate things about each other talk to me about that i, I think people love the brotherhood i think people love to see like mm. you know two kids just getting money together and and and, and not being jealous of each other and not and right. you know putting each other on you know he'll put me in front of anything yeah. and i do the same for him there's no my pocket is his pocket his pocket is my there's never been a time we argued over money or talked about it. It was just, it's a, it, we don't have to talk about it. Ooh. And I think Never. that that's, that's a beautiful thing that you can't have with everyone. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's, there's been friends from my childhood that I try to bring with me here. And it's like, I love them to death, but some of them just don't get it. Mm. Right. right. And I think people like to see, like growing up, I love watching Puff and Big just have that brotherhood. Right. Whatever it was, but from, from my perspective, yeah. it, was, it was a beautiful thing. Right. You know, mm-hmm. Dame and Jay. Right, and then I and then like I agree with that, bro. I feel like when Greg and I came, like we came friends, started to get cool. Even at first, like it wasn't like I was a fan. Right, it wasn't he wasn't like fucking with buddy, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, but like, dude, I love what you do. <laughs> oh, so yeah, I was cool. Right. Right. So it nah, wasn't, it like it wasn't, wasn't it wasn't instant. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Because I'm a very standoffish person. If anyone knows me, mm. like it takes time for me to warm up to somebody. But he's a sweetheart. But people yeah. don't. Right. People think that he's a dick, right. and he's not. But we were under the same management. Right. Until we realized that we both can't really be managed. <laughs> that part. And that I want to guess signs, but I won't do it right. Do it. Now. Let's no, try. Go ahead, go ahead. Leo or Virgo? I'm crying right now. I'm a cancer. Oh, a cancer. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. Come and on, Jenny. I, I'm not great at it. I have standoffish. Maybe an Aquarius? No, I'm a Virgo. That. Yeah. Okay. And over two. Damn. I'm, I'm over gonna hit you with my spiritual Kenny. leader, my spiritual advisor. You guys are gonna, we're gonna get. I know we're gonna get <laughs> you right. This I is can't help work. it. This Whenever someone start, at this point, I've been completely corrupted by the internet, and so now, <laughs> <laughs> so now everyone's like, okay, so you're standoffish. So you're an earth sign. I should have said that because yes, a Virgo would have been awesome. Hold on, so all Virgos are standoffish? Is that what you're trying to say? When I think of Virgos, I think of not to get on this tangent because I'll go <laughs> for forever, but like Virgos are like very meticulous. True. Very. Uh, I've noticed a lot of male Virgos end up being either very loud, like people think a Leo is, mm. or they're very um, bookish or like very st- study very meticulously a craft right. for instance like bmx or beyonce's a virgo 
She yeah. she gives very Virgo energy. Right. From definitely me. meticulous. Definitely OCD. <laughs> like, everything has a place. Yeah, that's very. That's a very like, uh, Virgo trait. The table's cool right now. I'm like, I'm not like over here, but it's fine. <laughs> Are you sure? I kind of want to. Yeah, I kind of want to move. Hey, hold your the, pillow. That was great. Like, Yo, it's cool. My like man was. was make sure it's right. My Please man was bugging me for this shit. Right, you see it. <laughs> what, we, what we need to put in That's the real deal. Yo, we show me and Kenny can't lie. Well, first, you're going to see our first interview. We uh, sat there, there. We had to guess it here. Right. We went straight selfish after that. Like, yo, yeah, like, Kenny, nah. we got to get the fuck up out of here. Sort it out. <laughs> no, Sorry, but, guys. Sorry, that guys. is so good. <laughs> no, but to, to get back to Greg and I, right? So, like, it took a minute, right? But once we found, like, this common <clears> ground, like, it was every day, no matter where we are in the world, like, we keep in touch, you mm-hmm. know? And Greg used to do this amazing photo series called Sixth Avenue. He was like, yo, come to Sixth Avenue, come to Sixth Avenue. And I was like, eh. And I actually showed up and I had one of the best times ever. And we ended up shooting like, what, like four or five? We, we shot a couple of them, but it yeah, was an yeah. epic time. That was my best. marketing thing. It was like, how do we get, you know, Instagram was fresh. And it's mm-hmm. like, how do we get eyes on I us? I love how that. We, we, were, we were actually going to bring that up. Okay. So right. can you ex- break that down? Just, about what, it just in, the, what, the six no. staff photo shoots? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, so the six staff photo shoots was something I would do in the street. I, it started off Check with... Check this out, Kenny was fucking sick. With, mm-hmm. um, you know, the, I used to take photos of jewelry outside of a jewelry store. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't like the lighting in there. With, with diamonds, you have to be in a certain lighting to get the right, you know, photo and vibe that you like. And someone I don't know, it, I'm sorry. I don't know what the lighting is in here, but it's no, no, like it's, it's a beacon. <laughs> like I can barely hear him. I'm blinded. <laughs> she got you. I don't got that. She got, no, the, we got to show the, that ice. The, the bracelet. Show that the, ice. The, the, yeah. the wrist particularly. I was like, uh. Yeah. <laughs> right. Things are hitting. This is my everyday. <laughs> Just casual. I love it. Hey, I love yeah. it here. <laughs> so, stuck, uh, so someone one day pulled up and was like, "Hey, can I get a photo of you?" So I was like, "All right." So we ended up just going into the street just because I didn't want to be on the sidewalk, mm-hmm. and it ended up being a really cool photo. Mm. So I was like, "If we do this with themes, this would be kind of cool." Mm. So we started off with like a, you know, he came on his bike and some dirt bikes and some quads, and another time it was like a golf cart, mm-hmm. another time it was a bed in the street, and yeah. it was just it just ended up being this small little production to this thing I was starting to get paid for. Mm. Mm. I was I was getting I was getting some fat checks. Mm. I got my first Lamborghini doing this shit. <laughs> first <laughs> first <laughs> nah, my first and my last. But right. I mean it's it, but it's it's honest. It, it, you know, it's, it's it was one of my first fat checks and I was like I'm getting a la- right, I'm right, getting a Lamborghini. Should. And I went broke getting a Lamborghini. Uh, how much is a Lamborghini? I don't know. It was a down payment. <laughs> <laughs> but um no, but they were listen. Like they were so fire. They though. were they were like, they, they were, were very good. creative. Mm. Like but pulled out people from different industries. I'll let you finish, but I just think I was gonna give you your flowers because it was a I very amazing that. idea. I was talking about it earlier too, like how we should figure out what's the. I want to do. I want. I would love to go over like real, real big production. Like, right. come on, let's go. Come let's on, go. let's go. I, need, I need to. I just want to shut down the tarmac, the airport. Ooh, 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 ooh. come on, JMT. <laughs> the, the thing is, it's bringing it to Sixth Avenue. Mm. Right. Uh, so we would, you know, I would. It, it, it was cool. We we did some really cool shit. I got a couple of people we could call to help shut Sixth mm-hmm. Avenue down. Right. Don't worry about it. The that. shutting down part mm-hmm. is easy. It's who can we get? Mm-hmm. I want to do like. That's what the shutdown is. Yeah, we gotta get the big yeah. person okay. shut down. Okay. We were able to shut it down. Shut so the you neck down. Okay. Right. <laughs> that part. I love that. Okay. So mm-hmm. All right. So once we once we get our thinking caps on and we figure out who is going to be the next person, what are some of the brands that you're currently working with? So it's a good question. Let's give it quick. Let's give it up for my guy for the Hermes show. He walked oh, the Hermes show. Yo, man. Can we talk about Thank monumental? You. Like, Thank you. Yo, keep I it going right now. Crazy. <laughs> talk, talk to us about that. I love that, man. I mean, yeah, like that was an amazing moment, right? So I got the opportunity to walk in the Hermes Men show mm-hmm. um, about a couple weeks ago. Greg people have you can't even Front go in row. that building. You people right. don't even walk in that. It was the first time we were in that <laughs> building, by the way. So you feel like the building was a domino I got two sugar factory. Hermes things like a fucking a. Uh, uh, a throw scarf for my couch and an ashtray that would kiss me. So I know it's Christmas a serious gifts. thing. <laughs> nah, but it was an incredible moment. Like Greg was there, my mm-hmm. mom was there. Oh God bless. Shout out to Mom Dukes. That's my heart. Oh that's God bless. Me. That's my heart. My brother was there. But again, it was just a dope moment, right? We look at a brand like Hermes and it's like ultra luxury, right? right. It's mm-hmm. one of the most like prestigious fashion houses ever. You know what I mean? A rich history. Um and a rich history in sport as well. Like a lot of people don't know Hermes is like Rooted in sport, really. So we've been have, we had a relationship for the past, I'd say four years now, and then again like this uh, this year I had the opportunity to walk in the men's. How are they deep rooted? Is this or is there ownership? Is there somebody that works in the company that loves sport and, and on every level? Or so they start off making horse saddles. Oh wow! Yeah, bro. And then it evolved into what it is now. You know what I mean? So again, like 
my like my roots are in sports, that brand's roots are in sports. Um, and that's how I look at my partnerships, right? Which you mm -hmm. just asked about. It's like, what's that common thread? Um, and things have to make sense to me. You mm -hmm. know, so again, that was a super dope moment. Um, right now working with Jordan Brand, mm -hmm. which you got the bike ears on. <laughs> Hold on, let's, be let's talk about it, man. <laughs> Hold on, Flex. Go ahead, man, Pat, when, go I, ahead. When, I, when I rolled up Come on, on man. he always checks my outfit head to toe. <laughs> like, oh, we were going out like that today. Right, like, <laughs> so what I, I want people to situation. understand outside, first of all, this shoe's incredible, It's bro. crazy, thank you. And, 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 and my man Yuna corrected me today when I explained to someone about, who when I tried to explain to a good friend of mine about what the deal was with the shoe, yeah, and yeah. I made the wrong, I used the wrong terminology of what, of what you did here. Right. But the thing that impresses me the most is me being from the Bronx in Puerto Rico, I don't know, but white and sky blue have always been some of my favorite colors. I was going to say, that's the perfect shade. It was a big 80s hip-hop color. That's, that's, that's everybody's color, classic, man. man. Sky <laughs> blue. It's such a good, it, it's, it's a perfect but shoe. But it's like it's a clean, gray blue. perfect shoe. And that's what's oh, that's crazy. a perfect Swayed blue. all around, I don't know what the terminology for this Harry is. Harry Suede. Huh? It's a Harry Suede. Harry Suede. <laughs> shows know, high end. Girl, right. Little bit but cool. the biggest flex with this shoe is it says bike air oh, on the yeah, back. That's yeah. crazy right there. That's when I that's saw so that. That's so crazy. I was like, <laughs> the only other disrespectful thing I've ever seen that you have to accept. This is not disrespect when I say it's like, you know what I'm saying? Hey. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Stunt wise, it's, dis it's disrespectful. Yeah, it's disrespectful. It's disrespectful. Right, How dare you? Well, you know, we're not trying to fuck up the next <laughs> match. No. This, this is disrespectful. One, one thing about Nigel, he has the audacity. Ah, you have the, the audacity. He has the audacity. All the time, bro. All now, the time. The only other disrespectful thing I've seen, OG Wan one time told Jay Z, You're disrespectful. He goes, What happens? Is, How could they let. You put your name Carter on the back of the Yankee jersey for, <laughs> which was Lou Gehrig's jersey. And somebody complained about that. They, really? They had to, they took down all of the Yankee jerseys mm -hmm. from the Yankee store when they were doing the, oh, the concert print, with him and Eminem. Right, right. So they had a certain, um, and I'll show you a picture. I got one of the few ones. This is a true story. He had sent me down, I mean, sent me up to Yankee Stadium to grab the jersey, but somebody complained, like a sports reporter. That's crazy. Complained that how could you allow Sean Doc Carter to put his last name over Lou Gehrig's number? And Juan is such an avid Yankee fan. He's mm. one of his best closest friends. Like, yo, you're disrespectful. How can you do that? I said, that's the Listen, audacity. That's this audacity. is the audacity. <laughs> Listen, that's the legendary. That's a great company to be in, as far as your opinion, Look, man. You I'm, feel me? No, no. I, <laughs> Listen I to me. It. Legendary company. Come on, Listen, See what I'm saying? It's on the way. See what I'm saying? Thir Thirty days Wait. away, right? Thirty days that's away. Speaking of legendary, make, make it twenty nine. <laughs> Speaking of legendary, twenty nine. <laughs> this day's almost over. Twenty nine. Yeah, yeah, twenty nine, man. Twenty nine. One day. Speaking of legendary, can we pull up the lyric from? Oh uh, man. What? From, we were talking about Jay Z. There's actually uh -huh. a lyric in which yeah. he Frank references Ocean. Yes, sir. you. Oh, let's go! In Crazy. a uh, Frank Ocean song. Okay, right. Josh. That was a moment. Ooh. I want to do a beautifully ill-timed, uh, dramatic reading. Talk about it, Kenny. <laughs> of, <laughs> of the lyrics once we might have to take another ten <laughs> days off for that one. <laughs> <laughs> we had nineteen days. 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 Nineteen Tomorrow. Yeah, I'm we blind. Let's out here today with it. <laughs> we can, uh, whoever's in the editing room can give me like some smooth jazz as my interpretive reading skills start. But can you um, pull it down for me a little bit? Thank you. <clears throat> Handlebars like a Xanax. Sham God with the and one moves. Throw that shit round your neck. Right quick. Broke boys get fixed. Right quick. Nigel Sylvester with these bike flips. Wow. Ooh, round wow. of applause. Come on, guys. Wow. That was goosebumpy. Wow. Come on. Legendary status. Wow. Legendary status. Ten days status. knocked off just like that. <laughs> this is Jay Z, guys. <laughs> yeah. This is Jay Z. I, no, this is Hove. The I'd God, imagine bro. that was you a understand? very surreal moment. You know what that means? It was definitely a surreal moment. And like the funny story about it was like that was one of the illest weekends of my life ever. I had I was, I was in the middle of doing a pop-up shop. Mm. in the Lower East Side. So I made this Louis Vuitton wrapped BMX bike mm. and I had it on display. <laughs> oh, that sounds cool. <laughs> in this pop-up shop. We had Later, let's get a picture it. of that. It was, it, was, it, was, it was a moment. And like, so the pop-up shop was Friday to Sunday and we opened it up on Friday night. And the song dropped, I believe it was Saturday morning, I think it was. Mm. And it was just this crazy moment where like I have this, the first one-of-a-kind Louis Vuitton BMX bike on display 
Kim Jones like posted on Instagram and like made it crazy at the time. He's a CD at, at LV, and then the biking track drops. So it was just like an amazing oh, moment for me. Wow, that's you know, crazy. An amazing, amazing moment. How the stars were aligned. You see that? <laughs> Insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we have to swipe off the whole Bing. thirty. Legendary. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what we working on? <laughs> I think if you give, me? I think if you give Kenny that bracelet, we might be able to slap listen. off fifteen days of that. <laughs> Money, 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 money. My wrist is cold. No, no, old jokes aside, that's pretty dope. Man. Nah, it was fire, man. It was fire. This, this, I'm not even being cute. This shit is good. Speaking of which, again, C4, perfect timing. Baby. We they need to bag. do, we need right. to. We need to have a bag or what? Yeah, we, need, <laughs> <laughs> we need to uh, do our C4 smart go. energy <laughs> moment. We uh, can have we can have you to do my part in the, on the infomercial. <laughs> no, it's actually really good. No, it's fine. No, it's good. <laughs> oh, just that. I might be high. I think I'm high. <laughs> that wasn't the cleanest opening. I've Leave done. that in the edit. Don't take that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I mean that in the you know I get high right. coffee every morning. Please. Since we already brought it up, uh, our partner here, C4 Smart Energy, wanted to know like how do you stay focused considering it is the energy drink of mental acuity and <laughs> mental focus and well-being. No, I'm like, I can't stay focused for shit. <laughs> you That's can you with the help of C4. <laughs> Looking straight at the camera with the help of C4. No, but like, what do you guys do? Like, is there a rit ritual or something that gets you ready for the day? Or do you listen to particular music? Or what is it that you do to stay focused? It, it, it's coffee for me. And it lasts about 45 minutes. And then for the rest of the day, I'm just not focused. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. That's the creative yeah, he's honest. talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just watching I'm just not focused. Just not focused. <laughs> um, I would say we keep each other focused. Yeah. Mm. So, you know what I mean? Like they say, still sharp and still. And definitely mm. there's times where I may be unsettled and I'll holler at Greg and, you know what I mean, he'll get me back like on track and vice versa. Mm. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That literally today, yesterday, right. every time I'm going through some shit, I'll call this guy. Or every time, like I see him, you know, there's another win on Instagram. I'm like, yes, it, it, it's it's not, it's not a competitive thing, but it's mm -hmm. like a. It's Do you like find a, that that's particularly rare in? Like, I think the bond we have is is absolutely rare, especially in mm -hmm. your fields where things maybe can get a bit competitive or, in like a negative way as opposed to. I mean, I genuinely want to see him win. You know, people yeah. that I genuinely love, I want to see them win. Right. Yeah, same. I want to like, see even the people I don't like. I don't care. Just win. You know what yeah. I mean? As long as there's nothing fucked up yeah. going on. But I, 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 I want to see people win. And I, feel, I feel the same exact way. Like, I feel like, of course, with, between Greg and I, but our whole like team is insane. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, if I see Peck doing something that's fire. Oh, that's amazing. We're gonna applaud. Same thing with Ronnie mm -hmm. and, and Nooney, mm. Daniel and Teddy. Like the whole squad. I'm Stamp, Vic, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like Chris Stamp, mm -hmm. like all of us are just like this an amazing collective and like I feel we all fuel each other's creativity, our like each other's hustle. Mm -hmm. And like that's very I think that's very rare to have. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's a beautiful thing. Like we travel together and we go on trips and we celebrate together. We finally and, have know, our own table. We got we built we have our table, own table. Which you always <laughs> you say. Know, you know what I'm saying? Like, which is amazing. We remember so. we were trying to get close to Peck. I was like, yo, we want to sit at that table. Remember? Hundred percent. And I was like, yo, one day we're going to have our own table. We're not going to want to do that anymore. Mm. Now we got Pekka at our table. What's up? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but there That's was a time, Pekka, seriously, that me and him would sit and talk. And like, we were like, damn, it would be, we would do anything just to sit at a table and just listen to what you guys are talking about. Right. Uh, I, I love and respect that. You know, but you know what's crazy? We talk about legendary shit, right? To me, I always learn from, from the real legends, right? right? Like, like the Jays and, and, and those guys. Um, uh, you know, the Puffs, Jermaine Dupree's, guys that I was, you know, very fortunate to work with uh, throughout my career, you know, the L.A. Reed. I think it's always important to listen to the young people, though, right? Like, you guys, mm -hmm. to me, if, if I can't sit at the table, and, and I appreciate the fact that I can teach you whatever experiences I've been through, mm -hmm. but it's, to me, I feel like I, I'm, I'm proud to sit there to learn from you guys, to learn with the younger kids, right? Mm -hmm. I can't really go to a company or go to my company or try to fix things unless I know what you guys are doing because... You guys are touching the street, right? You right. know what I'm saying? You guys are out there. You, you're you outside, and you're touching the kids and, and, and touching the culture and things of that sort. Because sometimes, you know, you ever meet somebody, be like, 
Yeah, all this guy did was hate. Didn't give me a chance to talk about what I got going on. He just right. wanted to blow himself the whole time. Like, you know, nobody does mm -hmm. that. Like, to me, I always learned that. Like, I always want to talk to you guys and learn. So thank you for giving me my pots and my flowers. But mm -hmm. to me, it's more important. I'd rather now, where I'm at in my life, sit at your table. Because I'm proud to sit at you guys' table. And you're welcome, and I love bro. that, man. No, Word man. Out. For real. So, so yo, what, tell us what a... Tell us one of your uh, uh, funny gift trip stories. I know, I know you I got mean, one. I mean, we, 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 we are missing trips, man. We privileged. I'm missing. I mean, no, we ain't had one in a minute. What's going it's been on? A I mean, while, Ronnie's man. been opening up stores. You guys gotta hop on that jet with us. You know Ooh. that part. That jet's on, man. Tough that tough, yeah, I gotta baby. Pull up. <laughs> Nigel, Nigel's always bird. busy, Fire so he can't. Every time, every time we have a kid retreat, we go. Nigel always got some photo shoot or some shit going on. Right. We ain't mad, but I'm just upset. That you're not there. I'll be missing some of the trips, Only, man. The one I really miss that I, I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm not mad that you go out and get your money and do your stuff, but I, I, Aspen, man. That but a Aspen, second Aspen, the second right. Aspen joint. second Aspen joint. Yeah, that one, but you was on another yeah, part of Colorado. Yeah, I had a whole another vibe. <laughs> another vibe, you know what Right, I was in Colorado, but I was on the whole other side. I think We're I was like, on like a full trip fall, or something. Fall, fall, Montclair. It was Montclair. Montclair, yeah. yeah, yeah it was you was Montclair. snowboard and flips. I mean, I, I, I ain't mad at that, though. Yeah. Montclair vibe. <laughs> <laughs> Fashion killer, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. So give a, uh, um, a Nadja, talk to us about some other projects you got going on. Right. Uh, ones that are from a business perspective and then ones that are truly deep to your heart. For sure. So something we did this year that was incredible, um, we did an event called Go Ride. So mm -hmm. I have a brand called Go. And... Part of the brand is like live events and, and bringing community together. Oh. And then there's this event called Go Ride. So the idea came from me wanting to do a bike ride that spanned across the world. Right. And we learned about World Bicycle Day, which is uh, the UN approved World Bicycle Day to be June 3rd. And they approved it 2018 or June 3rd. And if you think about what happened between in the world between now and, and June 3rd, mm -hmm. we had we were sitting in a pandemic for a couple years. So yeah. no one really caught when to World Bicycle Day and did anything around it. So when we caught wind of it, I was like, oh man, this would be an amazing opportunity to bring this global bike ride to life. Mm -hmm. So the team and I, we huddled up and we decided to do a bike ride from London to New York City in under 24 hours. Mm. So explain to us how that <laughs> how happened. Does right. <laughs> can, you, can you break that right. down? Of course, of course. Because so, I, um, I said I was going to participate until I heard it was going to start in London. Then I figured <laughs> that wasn't going to work for me, Greg. I, pro I promise you, same. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ask him. Like, I was wondering, we where rode, were you guys? We like, rode in the same. first one. Remember yeah, during right. the pandemic? The first three right. We rode from, from downtown all the way up, all the way to Harlem, then right. to Queens, right? And then back then. I or think. Was it, I think I think you jumped in the car halfway. No, right. so here's the story. <laughs> no, no. So me and Ed left. Me and Ed left uh -huh. our uh, jeep up in Harlem. Right. And then we rode down from Harlem to downtown. Mm -hmm. So we wasn't gonna ride from downtown uptown then back downtown. To uptown again. Right. So I'm we sure said yeah. we'd ride from uptown downtown, and mm -hmm. then our car would be uptown, so then we just... Oh, so started the ride before us. Yeah. Got it, I got it. You got see it. what I'm saying? Come on. He's like, you're not going to take my flight. All of us halfway through the ride, Peck was gone. But it's interesting. It's interesting. I was at the burger spot. 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 I was at the I was at the burger spot. I was at the I was at the burger spot. I was at the burger spot. I was at but so, so the team and I yep. landed in London June third. Mm. Set up the ride. First thing first. No, landed on June second. Uh -huh. Set up the ride June third. First thing first. We popped out. We had about two hundred and fifty kids with us, mm. and we did fifteen miles in London. We had sandwiches. We had smart water out there. We had music. I'm giving away T-shirts. Giving away Jordans. Like an Dope. amazing mm. time. So the ride went from about ten a.m to 12, hmm. jumped in the car, drove straight to the airport, jumped on the jet, flew to New York, came off the jet right to Ooh. the bike garage starting in downtown Manhattan. Big. And we had <sighs> almost a thousand kids in New York waiting Ooh. for us. And it's crazy, we had even more kids, but we landed an hour late, because it was a mix up with like with the, the passports and whatnot. Oh, passports, okay. You know what I mean? But we landed here, we did another 15 miles on the way back down we stopped in Times Square and we had all these kids in the middle of the street in Times Square screaming, go ride. Oh. And it gave me goosebumps to see this idea Energy. come from just this thought in my mind mm. to a real life thing. It was an amazing moment. Um, and 
anyone who travels understand that London is five hours behind us. Right. So we were able to execute this ride under 24 hours because of that time because difference. Of the time. You know what wow. I mean? But again, it, it, it was an incredible moment. Um, people were buzzing off of it for weeks after. Mm. And it's something we're going to do annually. Mm. So it's going to get bigger and bigger each year. Um, so again, it's, I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, I know it's going to be a, a, a dope moment. Maybe we get the podcast on there one day to bring the podcast to go ride and I love do, that. Yeah, do yeah, something do. fire, connect yeah. some dots. You we'll know what I mean? So, All right. yeah, you know I mean? I think it's important too, you should let people know like you can't necessarily execute a thought without the right team around you. 100%. Right. You gotta important. always have a team. And like this was something that we always have been talking about for quite some time, mm-hmm. connecting mm-hmm. the dots. And this podcast, by the way, all jokes aside, mm-hmm. this was a big topic of, of our kid trips, remember? Mm-hmm. With Ronnie, mm-hmm. Teddy, all of us were like, yo, I would sit there and tell all these stories, Kenny, and the mm-hmm. guys be like, yo, bro, you need a podcast. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, well, and we're here gonna we get, are. We're going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, right. and here we are. So I, I want to say, see, once again, for my, for my young brothers who I love and I respect and I look up to when it comes to business-minded and, 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 and really appreciate what you guys can do and tell me that this this has derived from that. No, so I want to say thank you as well, my brother. This is amazing, man. This is amazing. So kudos to you, bro. For real, kudos for real. to you. But thank without you. a team, we're nothing. So shout Our out team to is the, everything. Shout out to the team, right, shout Kenny? Shout out to the team. Strength, strength is in the team. <laughs> team. I couldn't do shit without my team. Right. Yeah. yeah. Talk so, about your team a little bit, Greg. I, 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 like, you have an amazing I, team, bro. I have, I have Jay Frost was with me from the beginning. I have mm-hmm. my, my, my brother, Rachel. Goat Lee, shout out goat, to the goat. The goat. Um, Zach, they're just incredible. Even uh, Amori, mm. you know, the, the Sureshes, the, right. you know, the Knicks, you know, just all of them. Everybody nice. played. When are we going to get a TV show with a lot of these background people on your end? So let's, let's can you explain to us? <laughs> this would go hard on are? A&E. Huh? It would go hard on A&E. Yeah. You know, I, I, I want to I, I know. I don't want to. <laughs> Joe David and Wendy? Yeah. Or Joe TLC. David and Wendy. Can we get an explanation on or so TLC? These were, these were people that are truly incredible people, by the way, mm-hmm. uh, that I met in the Diamond District. They, they were just, you know. Be, wait, wait. For, be, Before you get there, okay. explain to us about the Diamond District and then go to them. How, what, I is, mean, what does it consist the, of? The Diamond District is just one crazy block of just every hustle and bustle you could possibly think of and crammed into this one street, right? You mm-hmm. walk down the street, they're selling you. You know, you buying, you selling. <laughs> you, you want Cheetos, hot dogs, you know, watch. You know, what you, like, what do you, <laughs> anything you want, they'll get you on that street. So being from that place, especially okay. being from New York, it's already, we already have that, like, all right, what do you want from me mm-hmm. situation, yeah. right? So anywhere we go, we're already on it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's just that thing. And then being in that on that block is, is, is another, it's like, it's, it's triple that. Because you always have to be hypersensitive of what's going on around you. Because it's, 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 someone's always trying to fuck you over. Yeah. So... Um, meeting, I met this young man, Joe, he's, um, an old head from Harlem, about 60 years old, but he has the biggest potty mouth. All he does is curse, (laughs) but it's incredible because he's like, he's, he's low key a genius. Do you agree with me, Nigel? He's just so, he's so funny. Joe is a one of a kind. He's, he's just, (laughs) he's he's a beautiful human, but you have to, you have to see it to like understand. And then Wendy's this 65 year old lady that's just like. A recovering alcoholic that never really recovered from drinking <laughs> alcohol, and she's, she's just always smoking Kenny weed and, and just you know just they just say whatever they want. And then David is from um, good-looking Puerto Rican cat from the Lower East Side, and he's just he's just he's beautifully special. He's a, dan- <laughs> he's a dancer. And he's a dancer. <laughs> And David got like, moves, man. Together, it's just the, 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 just it's just this concoction of greatness. All right, mm-hmm. right. And, so this um, is noted. Nobody's gonna steal this idea. This is gonna be a TV I mean, show. I mean, I had to lay off of it a little bit. Everybody keeps asking me what's going on, what's going on. I had to kind of, I'm, I'm building out a store in, in Soho, as yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm, I've been really hands on and, and trying to focus in and get my team right before right, we right. start playing again. Because it's a lot, you know. It's a, it's yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of. You know, I got million dollar clients sometimes, and Joe will come in and be like, "Who the fuck is this white guy? <laughs> <laughs> Who's this cracker?" I'm like, "Joe." Definitely right. Like, and then he will be like, "I don't give a fuck." I'm like, <laughs> "Talk so spicy, bro. Like <laughs> to make everyone uncomfortable, uncomfortable in the room, bro." But it's funny though. He ain't spending no real money. I'm like, "Joe, he's about to spend all." Well, let me see it then. Right. It's just it's uncomfortable. Oh, it's, 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 million dollars, bro. Right. it's so uncomfortable. Madness. It's good. Even even like the thing is, he doesn't care because he's he's you know there's been times where Floyd Mayweather would come in and he's he's 
didn't switch up. It's the same energy. Same, yeah. You gotta, so that's what why you see I love is what you get. Yeah, yeah. Right. But um, those people keep you grounded, but right. they can fuck up your money too. Yeah, so they, you gotta dude, what out. I'm saying is, what people don't know is they've been fucking up my money for a very, <laughs> very long time. But I just love them so much that it's just they keep me happy and they keep mm. me grounded. Yeah, yeah. So, but I had to just kind of chill and, and, and get my shit together because we're about to. About to level up and you know, I was able, to I, thank you. Take over I was able Soho. to see a little bit of the space early. It was beautiful. Together. I'm happy. I can't wait till we go to the opening. Same. My I'm so like, excited. It's coming together. I will go there and um, put five uh, percent down on the bracelet for Ken. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We 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 do we we do you know Shopify shout out to Shopify you know they, they do that they do those little you know pay pay this much up front I think it's like two thirty nine you can start with <laughs> I'll even pay your first payment <laughs> pick out whatever you want I'll do the first payment right, we got you. so not only uh, are you a diamond extraordinaire jewelry aficionado there you go <laughs> there you go right. <laughs> but he's also a movie star hey I'm not a star a You're movie a star, bro. Stars. I, I made a cameo appearance in a movie. Uncut Gems. Talk Adam, Adam Sandler's the man. <laughs> <laughs> Adam you're, Sandler's the man. You were in an Adam Sandler Family movie, bro. Playing yourself. Movie. Yes. Playing yourself. Yes. How did that go? How did you prepare for that? <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you something? They gave me the script. I studied this shit for like a month and a half. It was like four lines. <laughs> I came there ready for my script, ready to do my lines. And they were like, all right, so we're not going to use this. We're going to do this. <laughs> I turned I turn white. <laughs> Yo, four pits of wet, hands clammy. Adam Sandler's like, are you ready? I'm about to cry. That's like they because were I had everything. I'm like, okay, this is how I'm going to say it. So I'm going to do it like this. I didn't sleep for three days before we were going on. And they're like, all right, scratch those lines. We're going to do it. Like They gave me a whole new... I, and I can't read. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, you know, I'm not, not my thing. You know, ADHD, the whole reading thing, I couldn't sit still when I was a kid. So the reading thing for me wasn't it. <laughs> horrible, horrible experience. It was like you were starring in your first porn no, movie and so, they tell you going behind the black guy, right? So you, you go, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Yo, bro. Yo. What's wrong with y'all, man? Listen. Yeah, I'm, call, up, I'm, I'm calling the police. <laughs> no, but listen. So when when you actually, pe people like I I didn't know too much about the the, the movie industry and how how things work. So mm. the the club that I was the, the scene that I was in it was a club scene, but in, in in the movie it's it's like it's popping. You hear it's club. But I think I remember during during it being recorded. Oh, everyone is just. No one's saying right. anything. Right. Oh. <laughs> I, I did that part a thousand times. <laughs> no, you didn't. I did that part a thousand the times. The fake wow. conversation in the Dude, club? Because well, you had to do it in one take. They were like, look, can you, can you remember this in one take? I'm like, I don't even know how to read this shit. I don't even know what the fuck this is. <laughs> <laughs> I was just nervous. It was just, you know, you know, it's just when you're nervous, it just fucks everything up. Uh, of course. Uh, you know what that is. I'm Adam stuttering. Sam. Adam Sandler's like, Dude, you're an idiot. <laughs> Idiot. Have you seen him since? <laughs> That's my guy. You know one thing though, like so he hovered over me for a little while. We 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 got pretty cool. He's right. actually one of the sweetest human beings in in, in the world. But right. uh, we got cool. We were on set for like three four days, and mm -hmm. it, it was just it, it, it was so surreal being able to kick it. You know, this is somebody you idolize as a kid, and you see him on TV. You know, your mom, my mom, and my dad love him. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just funny being able to work with someone like that. And then go to the premiere, bring my mom to the premiere. Mm -hmm. You know, That's you know fire. the feeling bringing your mom places is just, you know. Bro, amazing. if you ever get a chance, honestly, they, they have this special on like HBO or something where it's called the Mark Twain Award, where it's like the really most prestigious award you get in comedy. You should really watch it. The craziest thing is the, the level of comedians that come out and speak so sincerely about him and wow. about his craft and where he had come from and all the like shit he's done from like a professional comedic level. Mm -hmm. It's sick. You never really, because you said that he's such a nice regular he's guy. He's incredible. Yo, you you have like his body of work of all the fucking and, hits and hits he's done and is he, amazing. He brings his team. He, he has his, he had his whole team lit. Yeah. You notice that all his friends are in the movies. All friends. All, he yeah. put everybody right, right. on. Yeah, Chris so, Rock. So he gave, he gave a lot of people a platform. Yeah. Yeah. So you're yeah. To yeah he's pretty to dope, be, man. That's fire. But that's yeah. cool. It was a, it was a beautiful moment in my in my. Uh, Uncut gems. That was probably a, a highlight. Do you put that on your resume? So when you still no, <laughs> I thought it was it was just a cool little. <laughs> one day I'll I'll star. I'll be the. the, the Yo, that's the it. Lead. I'm gonna be like, 
I'm like, yo, so who's your guy? That's my brother, Nigel Sylvester. Right. My guy, fucking Greg. Yeah. Yo, this is uncut jazz. Look at the moves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, honestly, you, you can do it now. Side card and everything. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that Nigel is, outside of being just incredibly talented, is also being a bit of a philanthropist. Uh, yeah. And you have your foundation. You want to talk a bit about of that? Of course. Yeah. So we started. Um, well, even before that, charity is something that my mother was really big on, you know what I mean? Like my family's from Grenada, both my mom and my dad come from like very humble and their poor beginnings, you know what I mean? And when my mom and my dad came over to the States, like they still had family to take care of back in Grenada. Mm. So growing up, my household, I've always watched my mom pack these big barrels mm -hmm. and send them back. And summer vacations, she would pack up extra suitcases full of stuff. And like mm -hmm. my brother and I'd be lugging them through the airport, like yo mom, <laughs> like why wow, you got so many suitcases, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But as I got older, I started to understand the importance of giving back mm -hmm. and remembering like where you like came from. So 2021, we started the Not Just Investor Foundation mm -hmm. with a focus on empowering communities and bringing communities together through the power of bicycling. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's been an, an amazing journey thus far. We've given out hundreds and hundreds of bicycles. Mm -hmm. We've done community events in Queens and worked with brands like Chase and Jordan Brand to again like just again, shout out power. to Lois, JP Morgan Shout out Chase, to Lois girl. for hooking it up. Shout. You know what I mean? Shout out to my man Fairway Frank too for uh, JP Morgan Chase. There we no, go. We do. So um, no, it's, 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 been, it's been amazing. It's been amazing to be able to like, give back through the foundation um, and just again like, support kids and provide um, resources to them, to my community. Love that man. Yeah. That's dope. That's what this whole thing about too is like you know giving back to the kids or giving the kids the opportunity to show like there's two sides of, of celebrity, right? There's a the behind the scenes side. There's the, the, the front of the camera side and, and without a team, like we talked about the teams and stuff like that, a lot of the stuff, you guys can't get stuff done. So right. I just want to say thank you guys, man, for coming and telling us your stories. My word. Yeah, thank now you. We, you, we can find some, some more good stories on these kid trips. We got to tell Ryan to <laughs> get them going and then we'll get ready for season two. Okay. And we like to ask people what is their favorite thing, what is their goat items, their favorite movies, music, like what are some things that you consider the greatest of all time? In like, do opinion. you have a favorite movie? Gladiator and Blow. Awesome. Music wise, I run to the life after death. Mm. So you're, Every you're time. Out, you're out, your greatest My, of all time album is Life After Death. Life After Death. All right. Um, and then you say you have two greats, two greats of all time from movies. I have a couple, but uh, I would say, you know, Gladiator made me feel a type of, uh, a type of way, leaving the mm -hmm. um, movie right. theater. I like that. You, Nige? Um, Music, I'm going with Reasonable Doubt. Ooh. Can I Live is hands down my favorite song ever. Okay. Vibe. Movies, I mean, I got so many movies, but off top, I would say uh, Paid in Full and Home Alone 2. Oh. You know what I mean? Part two. Ooh, part two, New York. Okay. You know? Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, I like that. Put that back, bro. No, you don't want that. that, that. Good, man. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You like that? <laughs> <laughs> that Aye. Okay. Now, we're also going to do, speaking of music, the Hip Hop Goat Bracket, which is a recently added segment that has been quite popular here. And I'm curious to see uh, how you guys will work together to reach a greatest of all time hip hop edition so we have kendrick lamar versus tupac this week we have big versus drake this is our first on this side so between those two who are you guys picking i mean do Wait, we just go we with the originals or we go give them the new it's really that simple well, and then on the other side, we have what, Kanye. Look, how are we breaking this down right now? Bro, mm -hmm. that's why, I mean, this is diff well, quite let's, difficult. Well, I guess let's introduce everybody that's in the in the bracket. We have Kendrick Lamar versus Tupac. Okay. We have Notorious B.I.G. versus Drake. We have Kanye versus Lil Wayne and Jay-Z versus J. Cole. So... Now I mean, this is the uh, this is sort of the NCAA style right. of right. of bracket picking when it comes to who you think is the best so and how we're gonna find a you greatest have Kendrick of all time. Lamar and Tupac. You guys, you would have to choose Together. who it is. My question is, how are we like you know what I'm saying? Because right. these are both greats. 
Or like Pac. That's the challenge. For me, challenge. It's, it's going to be Pac for me every time. All right. I'm okay. going to go with Pac as well. All right. So we have Pac between B.I.G. and Drake. I, I assume I mean, that's an okay. easy choice. Too, okay. <laughs> but is it though? Because for me, you, like for me is, is Big, but also Drake. You know what I'm saying? Big was for me was the original storyteller. HD. All right. Well, well, right. Well, hold on. Let's, when we get there. You, okay. So you guys both feel like Tupac over J. Cole, correct? Over Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar. I'm sorry. Over Kendrick. I yes. apologize. So now... Kenny, what are they choosing from? Notorious B.I.G. versus Drake. We're going to go with Big. You? Okay. All right. You see my wrist? Notorious. I see it. I see it. Right. It's, it's tatted on there, man. All right. We have Kanye versus Lil Wayne, which is a very interesting. That, see, like that one is, the, you know. I'm going with Ye. What you got? Y'all gotta read your consensus. I mean, Wayne. Oh, we go together. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, so what you saying? I don't know, Wayne. Like, rock, paper, scissors? Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I fuck with them both. Okay. Rock, yeah. So whoever wins takes what? Wayne? Or? You take Wayne, I take. Okay. Yeah. Rock, rock, paper, scissors, that shoot. <laughs> okay, that one. Yeah. Do it again. Yeah, no, that's it. He's right. He put the rock. That's it. Right. Okay, we take, we take, we take Ye, because I'm not mad at Ye. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then we have. I like that. That was, that was. Teamwork. Old again, school New brotherhood. York right there. You know what I mean? Now, Jay Z versus J. Cole. <coughs> Jay Z. Yeah. Jay Z. I, I could answer for him because we right. know who his favorite artist is. Right. So now we have Tupac versus Biggie. I mean, this is the big one. This we've, is the big one. So, the, f f for me, because I'm from, I love them both. <laughs> But because I'm from I'm from New York and I was outside, you know what we went through in, in 1996, 97, 95, or 1000. So right. I'm I'm going with Big. Okay. So we're going with Big. Is that a consensus? Big. Yeah, I'm about to work with my bro. 100%. Yeah. Okay. And then we have Kanye versus Jay Z, also in a weird way, kind of. It's just Jay. Yeah, that, yeah. And, 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 and right there, my friends, is this is exactly who Nigel and I are right here. <laughs> this is exactly what it is. Look at look at all the shit we just went through. But, look, it comes down to the right, us again. Right. <laughs> so here we we have to, to ask ourselves that final question, that most difficult one. So, then. so it's not a difficult question because he's always gonna pick Jay and I'm always gonna pick Big. So, so there's no that. number one. And, 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 and look, it. collectively. We'll take it like that. Right, just okay. like that. They've, they've elected the third option, which is to not choose. <laughs> Basically. But that's so what we're saying. We're choosing to not choose. Okay, fair. They're saying there's no discussion. We have to stop it right there, and that's what it's could I could honestly go with both, because they, they, they both give me the feels. I, so I could, wait, so if he goes with one and you could go with both, does that mean that one gets picked I'm over? I'm saying because he's my bro, I'll, I'll take, I'll, I'll, I'll dead my guy, I'll go with Jay. Okay. okay. All right, so, All right. That's, so you All know, right. numbers, that's, that's Jay-Z then. All right. Ooh. Thank you guys. How I'm you guys feel? I don't need to say much. Like. It makes you a little uncomfortable this game, right? Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. I mean, it's like we can sit and discuss this but all that's, day. That's, but that's teamwork, right there. That's you know what that is. Ding ding ding. Well, right, right, like, just, I just want you guys to know the way we just did that is the way we make all our moves. Just like that. Just like that. Yes or no? Hundred percent. It's easy. <laughs> just like Rock that. paper scissors and all. <laughs> but it's like, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not fighting with him. We can get right. into it. Yeah, whatever. I don't want to get into it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> And <laughs> I won't even do that right now to them. I won't even do that to them. Right? Well, who'd you pick though? Michael Jackson. Me too. Between Michael Jackson and, and who? R. Kelly. Oh, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson wrote a bunch of. Well, Hold on, you I gotta give him the whole conversation, not, right? So where were we exactly? Who asked this question? Rafi. No, but Rafi got it from somebody else. Whatever. Know. So the co so the, the question was in t in a today's verses. Yeah. Twenty joints. Both these artists on stage: Michael Jackson, R. Kelly. R. Kelly got those, some. Who's gonna take it? Those aren't even like. Equivalence in my head. I like her. Those I are mean, not. You have to really think about it, though. I don't have the to. Music. <laughs> the We're music. The music. I don't think. She, I don't think. I don't. I, I think he's saying song for song, song for not song. necessarily iconic. Removing status. the artist. Still away. song for song. Nah, Mike, 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 Mike got it. Mike got it all day. I agree. But we've having this conversation, this debate for the past several weeks. Because everyone feels different, of course. Like independent what, what, of my. We talking about Young Rafi, our, 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 yeah. our Young Rafi. Young Rafa, shout out to my boy Young Rafa. We love Young Rafa. Like Rafa. independent. Yeah. You know what I mean? Shout out to Ralph, bro. Hundred percent a legend, a legend. A legend. without even trying. Is there anything else you guys want to cover? Probably ask about the basketball. We'll talk about that. Yeah, I want to know about this basketball. Cause I see it right here, and I wonder if I can slam dunk it. No. Well, why not? You, you can't well, slam dunk well, it. Well, one, it's in a case. <laughs> that, shows, <laughs> that shows that it might be a bit important, but also. <laughs> Two, I think um, because you learned to ride a bike at such an early age, I'm, I'm kind of thinking your, your basketball game's a little garbage, so I don't think you can dunk it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> mine is. I mean, 
<laughs> I'm more of a football player myself, right, man. You feel you me? Go. Like, I'm more of a football player, you know? But this, if I'm not mistaken, is this also a Jordan piece? No, nah, this, this, this ball right here was actually all signed by Obama, LeBron, Kobe Bryant, and Carmelo Anthony, if I'm correct. And this was the most star-studded basketball game in memory that didn't take place on the NBA court. It says, even weirder, in a game featuring LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Magic Johnson, and Carmelo Anthony, the most famous player had never made a pass the bench on his high school team. That's because this game was hosted by President Obama oh, for okay. his 49th birthday. Uh, barred from the gym, the 44th President of the United States just wanted to play a regular basketball game, and when the President of the United <laughs> States calls you... He happens to be the first African American <laughs> uh, a president of the United States. Mm. You get to play with LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Carmelo Anthony, and That's Magic crazy. Johnson. Not mad at that. Not mad. Shout out to OB. Right? Yeah. So I don't think we should dunk it. We should sort of like uh, give it a little respect. Nah, you got it. You got it. I just want to know what was going on with it. I just want to know because it was sitting here. You know. One of the infinite examples of rally getting things that I have no idea how you got your hands yeah. on this. Right. <laughs> I didn't realize we, uh, how popping it is. You go on the second floor of this place? Oh, yeah. This is a beautiful fun. space. Yo, my man why? got this shit popping. I want to know why am I from New York and I don't understand. I, I, this is my first time in this place. Can you right. explain it's that? It's new. And I passed by a million times. This is because this is what connecting the dots It's does. like a right. stock market We're upstairs. We're going to put I love it. For culture <laughs> with, our, with our guy, Rob, which is why we, this is our home base and why we shoot here. There's so much culture and history in here. Just by walking around is nuts. Right? I got something for y'all. I got. I got a nice Ooh, talk. There we go. There Let's go, go bro. Crazy. You already know. Let's go. Things. Okay. Last time we here, we uh, when we did our guy, mm. uh, Cece, we um, we uh, we had a game worn pair of Michael Jordan one J one game fire. worn. What does something like that go rookie for? Rookie year. Rookie year. That's fire. What color? Red, Red, white, and black. Red, white, yeah. Yeah. Oh, those right there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Those was fire, yeah. man. Yeah. Oh, he that actually wore those? What was, what was something like that? If I wanted to buy them, I'm just asking. I'm just wondering. Uh, I don't know. Three what? 300,000? 300, Three That's less than I thought it would be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going to stick with the Nigels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, <laughs> I'm keeping these. <laughs> By the way, this is what, uh, next week, Rob, these will be in the case. Right. You need to put these, these in the, the case. <laughs> these are bike worn. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> bike worn, <laughs> this is bike worn, bike, bike here, worn. Man. North Nigel Sylvester on, joints man. right here. We put yeah, right these on the Kiff trip. <laughs> you feel me? Like, listen, I was there. Yeah. Put, 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 put them in the case, man. Big Mike, huh? Killing the game. It's crazy. Shout out to Nigel Sylvester, my thank little you, brother. Sir. Shout out to you too. I want to say thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations you, on making it to legendary you. status Ooh. after the show. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Love you, my brother. From today. Always here. Yeah. From today. Right, right. Shout out right to now. my little bro, Greg Yuna. Thank you, Thank you right so now. much. I want to say a jewel extraordinaire. That's what I think we should say. And I love you. And thank you for making it to legendary status on this Same. show. Right. All right. Awesome. You only got one more day. They, after you give Kenny the bracelet, then you know, that's it. Yeah, that's you it. Good. That could really like speed it up. <laughs> Honestly, I can put in a good word. Apparently, Michael. <laughs> we gotta stick you up from here. All right. No, but thank you guys, and we really appreciate you. No, of course, you're right now, love. Thanks, Kenny. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.